Hallelujah. Uh, I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Uh, as we have come on this lovely Friday, you know, uh, spring day is upon us. After spring day, it will be summer. Hallelujah. Uh, today, I'm getting the hang of this typing business. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. uh, today, you know, I, there was a topic that I was uh, studying the whole week, you know. And there was a topic that I was studying the whole week. And then today, as I was preparing, God said, teach them, you know, especially after Wednesday service. You know, as young people, this topic is very important for us. The, the Lord said, teach them about living a life of favor. You know, I was planning, you know, sometimes you like these deep messages like purpose, you know, purpose of, uh, of individualism. But God said, teach them about living a life of favor. You know, and uh, I've been privileged, you know, to enjoy a little bit of God's favor. Uh, so, you know, I know a little bit of it. I know a little bit, and the little I know, uh, I will, as Paul said, I deliver unto you. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, in today, you know, in today's terms, in today's uh, definitions, there are many meanings of favor. There are many, many meanings of favor. You know, we can go to a friend and say, "Hey, man, I need a favor." You know, you say, uh, "You know," and when you need it, you remember that day that I gave you a favor. Now you owe me a favor. You know, we don't, we don't want to talk about that one. So for the purpose of today's teaching, I want us, you know, I went to Google, you know, Google is, I mean, I like Google. You know, I went in to Google and I said, definition of favor. And I found three that I liked. It says, approval. And so the first one is approval, support, or liking for someone or something. Approval, support, or liking for someone or something. The second one is over generous preferential treatment. Over generous. So it's approval, support, or liking for someone or something. Over generous. So it's not only generous, but it's over generous preferential treatment. And then the third one, it says give unfairly preferential treatment so the first of this the second one is over generous preferential treatment then the third one is to give unfairly preferential treatment unfairly i want us you know that unfairly that over generous and you know liking for someone that that is favor if that does not uh, sum up favor both biblically or naturally i don't know what else will that is favor, you know, and in our definitions, if you look at our definitions, the one thing that I realized is that favor is not fair. Favor is not fair. It says unfair preferential treatment. Already preferential treatment is, you know, prefer preferential treatment. This one says it's unfair. It's unfair. So not only do you not qualify, you know, but now you beat those who do qualify. It's unfair. So favor is not fair. And as young people, we ought to covet. You know, we ought to covet. And covet means yearn, and yearn to possess. So we ought to covet the favor of God on our lives. So we ought to yearn to possess it. You know, the favor, not, not only man's favor, but God's favor on our lives. We ought to covet it. And he said, you know, when you, when you live a life of favor, you have an unfair advantage over others. Not because of who you know. You know, there, there's a political favor. I know Jacob Zuma. I know Cyril. I know Julius. I know Floyd. That's, not, that's connections. You know, in the Department of Education, I can get tenders because I know NG Mutsech. That's connections. But this one is because of who you are connected to, which is God. So it's not who you know. It's but who you are connected to and the one you are connected to can't be denied so you can't be but favored because you are connected to the one that owns all the favor hallelujah mm -hmm. and it is not because of the color of your skin it's not because you are black 
white, blue, Indian, Chinese. It's not the school that you went to, you know. It, it's definitely not the school you went to or the course you did or the bribe you paid. The favor of God on one's life has nothing to do with what is happening physically. But it is an unfair advantage that you have over others by virtue of living in Him, of moving in Him. Of, the Bible says, in Him we live, in Him we move, in Him we have our being. So when people see Him, they see Him. When they see you, they see Him. And when they see Jesus, they can't deny Him. And that way you have, you know, an overly unfair advantage over everyone else. So Psalm 102, let's go into the Bible. Uh, that uh, you know, I don't like these you know long introductions without a biblical verse, you know, biblical basis. It's Psalm 102, verse 13. It says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the third time to favor her has come. So it's our time to get favored. Zion, uh, Zion in the Bible is, you know, it's a, it's a people which have a covenant with God, biblically. Zion is not a, you know, we have Zion Christian Church, and then we have a place that's called Zion. You know, this one is a people that have a covenant with God. So when you have a covenant with God, it is your set time to receive favor. Even if you received favor yesterday, today is still a set time. Even if you receive favor at five, at six, it's still your set time to receive favor. Amen. Because this is, you know, it's not having favor. It's living a life of favor. Everything you do, everywhere you go, you are just favored. Or everything you touch has the favor on it, God's favor on it. Hallelujah. And the best time, you know, I always, uh, you know, I like... Uh, you know, we are engaging with young people. The, the, the best time to enjoy God's favor is when you are young. When you are old. You know, uh, the, the, there's an intern of mine. Uh, you know, she got favor. She, I, I favored her to get a job. You know, and now she's going, she's 26. She's 26. She's going to Thailand. Next week they are going on vacation, her and her friend, to Thailand. You understand? So when you have favor of God on your life when you are young, you get to enjoy things when you still have energy. Mm -hmm. you know, imagine you are you with your wife, you are enjoying favor when you are 60. They are, they are already saying, careful, Papa, that's when you want to go to Thailand. You know, you must go to Thailand when you still have a six-pack. Walk on the beach, not when everything is already falling. Then you are watching on the beach with your six months pregnancy. The best time to enjoy God's favor is when you are young. It's a time, you know, when we are young, we are building our lives. You know, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are still gathering bricks to build our lives. We are building our careers. We're building businesses. We're building relationships. And, you know, and for, for those things to prosper, you know, for your business to prosper, for your career to prosper, for your relationship to prosper, for your life to prosper, you need God's favor. Imagine you are building a business uh, and there's no favor of God. That business will crash. Or you are in a career, you will keep, uh, you know, there are some friends of mine, they, they've been working for over 10 years. Some, you know, in their 40s and their 30s, they are still engineers, entry-level engineers. When you guys come into the workplace, you are in the same level as them. Because there's no favor. And when you are young and you have God's favor, you just go up. They say, ah, that man, he just arrived. He's already a senior engineer. Ah, he just arrived. He's already a manager. He just arrived. He's already a director. Your relationship is prospering because you attract people, you know, that will favor you, not, you know, the ones that will hold you today, tomorrow they drop you. You know, you find a girl and then it doesn't work out. And then you drop her, you know. Because there's no favor. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So we need, you know, we need favor. Even as a church, individually, we need the favor of God. We need favor from people to achieve what we want in life. You know, even as a church, we need favor of God. As a church, there are some churches, you know, I was, I, we were speaking in Oliver uh, with the book Pastor Owen and the Pastor Azuras and them. And we're like, you know, there are some churches in Pretoria that you don't even pray 
forget all night prayer, half night prayer. There's no half night prayer. You know, their prayer is before service. Oh, Father, help us today. Or their intercession is on Tuesdays, one hour. And, you know, ask every day, three hours. A Wednesday service, a Holy Ghost night service, a seminar, a conference. You know, and you know, and there are some churches that, you know, they come, they enjoy God, and the church is influential because God's favor is upon it. Not because of anything that they are doing. That's why I'm saying, I, I want to, to see, you know, favor is not because of what you are doing. Mm-hmm. It's because of what you have on you. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. So let's look at now, you know, a young man that enjoyed God's favor. Genesis 39. Genesis 39, we look at Joseph. You know, I like Joseph. I like Joseph very much because he had favor. He had the favor of God on his life. Genesis 9, th- you sorry, 39, 3 and 4, and then we jump to 20 and 21. It says, okay, 2, and the Lord was with Joseph, and he was, pros- he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that he, he made the thing, all, the, all he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace, which is unmerited favor, in his sight. And he served him, and he made him overseer over his house and all things he had put into his hand. Verse 20 says, And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, and the place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. And the keeper of the prison looked not at anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Amen. You know, Joseph had what you called unmerited favor. He was just born. You know, when you are just born, and then people start liking him. That's all he did. That's all he achieved. He was just born. And then, all of a sudden, his favor, his father was favoring him. When his father was favoring him, his brothers got jealous. They sold him into slavery. And the Bible says he was a prosperous slave because he had unmerited favor in the house. You know, Potiphar's house, you know, it's like Cyril. Potiphar is like, a, no, not Cyril. He's like a minister in Egypt. Imagine a minister doesn't have only one slave. He had many slaves. And the Bible just said he liked Joseph. And everything in his house, he said Joseph. And then Joseph went to prison. Ah, even in the prison, the thing was following him. He couldn't escape it. After he escaped prison, he was now over all of Egypt. No matter where he was, no matter what he was doing, God's favor was upon him. Amen. God's favor was upon him. There are people who are selling uh, Makuinya who are making more money than engineers. Because it's not about what you do, it's not about where you are. It's about the favor that is following you. Look at Brother Emmanuel, pastor's, uh, uh, you know, the one who sells gold. And he was selling sweets. You know, you were selling sweets, you know, those selfie phones and that used to be on the street. You go there with one rand, they pump, pa, pa, and then you talk for one minute, 90 cents. You were selling sweets, chippies, and with those phones. And now he, he, his money is the one that he can just go to pastor and say, pastor, here's 50,000. So he thought about what you are doing, but what you are doing it with. Joseph, whether he was in the, in the house of the master, when he was in jail, favor was just following him. And he was a young man. Eh? The Bible says he was a prime minister when he was 30. 30. So he started enjoying this favor in his 14, 16, you know, when he was 20s. So he was already the top dog when he was doing these things. Favor, 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 you know. So that's why I'm saying that, you know, there were many people. It's not about, ah, the market is saturated. So if you want to open a business, you can say, ah, maybe you like you, you want to open a computer science business. You say, ah, there's already Microsoft, there's already Facebook. No, it's favor. Mm-hmm. Favor, no matter what is already there. People, there are many uh, 
instant messaging apps. There's Viber, there's uh, Snapchat. Okay, Snapchat is doing well. But there's Viber, there's Emos. But people just like WhatsApp. Don't, we don't even know why we like WhatsApp. But Viber, in fact, has better emoticons than WhatsApp. It has better video call, it has better voice call, but we just like WhatsApp. We don't know why. Social media, there's, there was MySpace, there was MyFace, there was my what, what but we just like Facebook. It's favor. It's favor, no matter how saturated the marketplace is, if God's favor is on you, you will just prosper. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, and like I said, it, it's a, what do you call it? It's unmerited. I want us to, you know, I want us to get that point that God's favor is unmerited. It's grace. It's unmerited. It's not about, you know, I was fasting. Hey, after I fasted 30 days, yes, you fast, you pray, yes. But it, it's not about that. You know, when I, I remember there was a time I was at Nisan, you know, when I was still a, a, what do they call it? I entered into the graduate program. There. So I was. I used to work on like the production line, and then there was this like Afrikaner man. You know, he was one of the few last men standing in Nisa who was still an artisan. He was an artisan in Nisa. That man was racist. Everyone knew he was racist. At lunch, he didn't hear. He sat alone. As long as he's not eating with black people, he's fine. You know, he was. And one day he came to me, and he just looked at me and said, "I like you." I don't know why. I like you. You know, I, I don't. I never spoke to him like, you know, I used to chat with him. I, I used to just engage him. I didn't care. You are racist. You are not a racist, my friend. You are a human being. For me, white, black, Indian, I will talk to you. You don't want to talk to me, I will still talk to you. And he said, I like you. I don't know why. So favor is that people just like you and they don't know why. They just like you. In, in, you know, in South Africa, in the world, you need people to like you. you know, we've been uh, working in this thing for a bit. You need people to like you. As a church, we need people to like us. You know, that's why I'm saying, Wuti, some churches, people just like them because of favor. We need people to like us. It's not, you know, yes, God told us that, you know, we must have influence in the realm of the spirit. But we need people to like us. That no matter what, they will come to fellowship. We need people to like us. Hallelujah. So, like I said, it's not about you are praying 16 hours. Yes, those things have their place. Prayer for 16 hours, uh, fasting, giving. You know, God God does not, you know, like pastor. Let's make, uh, you know, use a very close example. Pastor prays. Pastor fasts. Pastor gives. But God was not uh, making him do those things so that he can have favor. You understand? He already had the favor. So God said, you are going to go into the world to display my power. And how do you generate power? Through fasting, through prayer, through giving. Those are the things that now when you go out, people will also give unto you. He already had favor. You understand? And God was just elevating him that so that when you go out there, you don't disgrace me. You know, there are some people that doors are open and then they disgrace God. You come and you talk about you know, kapano, or just that food. You, you, you talk about things that you know, no one is understanding. But because you have favor, you must fast. Because you have favor, you must. You are not praying for favor, or fasting for favor, or giving for favor. You are doing those things because you are favored. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. So, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it's, you know, there's something that used to perplex me. I used to ask God a lot. You know, there are some people, we have met many of them. These people, they don't do anything extraordinary. They don't do anything wow. You know, especially in the workplace. Someone comes, they are not the hardest worker, they are not the most brilliant mind, they don't have the greatest ideas, but then they are being elevated. And I used to ask God, why? Why? And then yes, there was an old man that I worked with here at Nissan. That man was brilliant. Ah! That Temukonyan. That Temukonyan will just look at the problem. He will just spend two hours already solved. There are some people, they two weeks, five years, they are still facing the same issue. But he, he retired an engineer. 
you know, and an engineer is not a compliment. Like it's an engineering is a compliment while you are still studying. When you start working, uh, engineer is no longer a compliment, my brother. Especially if uh, after five years you are still an engineer. He did, he was an engineer for 20 years, one position, one grade, getting 7% increase every year. And then there were young people that, you know, because favor, you know, because favor, one of them now is one, uh, Reynolds Nissan uh, Mitsubishi pilot. It's favor. It's favor. Hallelujah. It's favor. You know, so we need to, you know, we need our own favor to be a wonder. Wonder favor, like Pastor is teaching us signs. One is, we need our favor to be mind boggling. To say, ah, we know this guy, we know this girl in our communities, in our schools, in our, you know, in our, in our environment, because our, the favor of God is upon our lives. Hallelujah. Because the favor of God is upon our lives. Another example, Daniel. Daniel chapter 1. You know, our favor must be mind boggling, like that of David. Of Joseph's. Because even his brothers didn't understand. Ah, ah, ah. This guy, we sold him. You know, like my car. My car is a property. I like uh, Pastor David or David. He said, David was a prosperous property. You know, I leave my two bedroom apartment. By the time I come back, it's those mentioned from Stain City. A property was being prosperous. Or my car. By the time I come out, it's a private jet. The property is being prosperous. It doesn't make sense. But it's because of favor. A property. Like imagine that flat of you are staying in with your brother. When you come back, it's a mall. And you see, here's the title deed. The shops have already rented. Woolworths is there. Checkers is there. Property being prosperous because of favor. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1. Verse 9 and 19. Verse 9 and 19, it says, Now God had brought Daniel into favor, tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Verse 19, And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding, the king inquired of them. He found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all the realm. You know, whether you are with a eunuch or you are the king, favor. You are talking to, you know, your, your, your fellow Asha or you are talking to Cyril, they just favor you. It, it's not, you know, that's why I'm saying that, you know, favor is not, a, there's no, uh, if you are favored, you can be favored for this, but you are not favored for that. Favor is favor. You carry it. You live that life of favor. You know, and Daniel, Daniel and his friends, they were, it was just following them wherever they went. And as a result, they were preferred. Like we said, it's over generous preferential treatment. They were found 12 times better. 10, sorry, 10 times better than everyone else. And there were a lot of magicians. There were a lot of brilliant people in the land. You know, Jews and those uh, astrologers, they are very brilliant people. But none of them were found like them. Hallelujah. Because favor, like I said, favor is not meant to be fair. Favor is not meant to be fair. It is an unfair advantage that God gives unto his children. It is an unfair advantage. So let's look at another scripture. Luke chapter 2. Now let's look at another young man, which is Jesus. You know, he was also a man at the time he was here. So Luke chapter 2. I want us to see, you know, something. Luke chapter 2, verse 49 and 52. It says, And he said unto them, how is it that you sought me? We, we, do you not know that I must be about my father's business? Verse 52, it says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. He increased with the favor of God and men. He increased in the favor of God and men. So favor is in levels. You know, it's not a levels like those levels. But favor, you can increase in them. You can increase in favor. It's in levels, you know. When I was younger, when I started working, I had favored 
you know, I had level of fever to be a graduate, to enter the Nissan graduate program. That was my level of fever. First, I entered. You know, I didn't, because I didn't know that I had fever. When I was even younger, when UCT and UP accepted me, I thought about money. I said, ah, they're expensive. Hey, tertiary fees. Hey. So I didn't have favor for that one, for bursaries. But when I realized my favor, ah, I grew favor for the Nissan graduate program. And when I was there, I, I grew my favor to get like an entry-level engineering position. Because there were some that also did industrial engineers, but they were line-side operators. So it's not because, hey, this guy, because he did engineering. No, I got favor for, uh, what's his thing? Entry-level engineer. Then while I was still working there, I got favor again for Alstom to, you know, the, then Alstom called me, the company I work for, Kibela now, they called me to manage a project that I knew nothing about. You know, the project, they just said, we want you to become a project manager for this project. That was another level of favor. Even though I knew nothing, but favor was following me. And then after I got there, I, I got favor now to become a manager. You know, in one of the most difficult uh, scopes of work in that company. It, not the most, but one of them. Because, you know, it's like there's nothing. Some people, they give you manager position, but, you know, there's already a base for which you, it was nothing. I had to start from scratch. And but because favor, they didn't see anyone else who can do it because of favor, not because my mind is sharp. Uh -uh. It was because favor was following me. My boss couldn't sleep. He was saying, ah, that position, let, let's give it to Luvu. Let's give it, ah, let's give it to Luvu. And favor was following me. So favor is in levels, graduate program, entry level, a project manager, a business manager. Because it's favor. Hallelujah. Favor is in levels. So, you know, uh, and I had a recent conversation, it was, that one was, you know, I was thanking God after that conversation. I had a recent conversation with the first director who recruited me. He told me, you know, hey, Luvuyo, you know, your position was under contention at executive manager level. And he said, I stood, I stood there in front of all the directors, the CEO, the CFO. And he said, I want Luvuyo. If he fails, it was because of me. I will take the hit. If he fails in it, I will take the hit. So, you know, a director from France who does not know me from here to Timbuktu, he does not know me, he has never met me before, he just favored me and he said, I'm prepared to lose my job. If this boy fails, I am prepared to lose my job. Because favor was just, it was harassing him. He went home, my favor was harassing him. That day, you better. There was someone who I knew, I knew that guy. He knew the job, he knew the system, he knew project, he had been working, he had maybe 10 years more work experience than me. Because I only had two years work experience, and that guy had like 13 or 12. But the favor, the favor gave me unfair advantage. Because even he was saying, ah, it's not fair. This guy doesn't know anything. Everyone was just looking at me in the office, but how did you get here? You don't even know. But favor, hallelujah, favor was just working in my favor. Favor was working in my favor. I like that. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So we, we ought to keep growing in God's favor. So if you have favor today, you know, don't stop there. You have favor today maybe for people to give you 500 rand. He'll just give you 500 rand. Go higher. Get favor for 5,000 rand. If your business, you know, you have favor to start a business. You know, get more favor to open, you know, a satellite branch. Increase your footprint. Go multinational. You know, there are South African companies that are operating in U.S., in Japan. Those, that's the kind of favor we want when we start businesses as children of God. Not that your business is small, 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 small business. You know, you own five taxis and then you own ten taxis. When you die, those taxis get sold one by one. Favor of legacy. Hallelujah. And then also we go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. I want us to see favor. What happens when you are favored. Acts chapter 2 verse 47. Hallelujah. 
we read from verse 46 it says and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart and praising god and having favor with all the people and the lord added to the church daily such as should be saved it says praising god and having favor with all the people and the lord added to the church daily daily not you know weekly daily people were increasing in the church because they had favor with all the people hallelujah so when you have favor then god continually adds to your life he will keep increasing you in all things so as a church when we are favored he will add people to our fellowship but we must covet it you know it's not something you know favor is like electricity electricity is there but it doesn't mean the lights are always on you need to switch it on you know god is will not just ah i want to give you favor you're saying no god i don't want favor and i say i will force you I will. god will not force you to take your favor it's your favor so why must he force you so some christians they have favor and they say ah lord i'm always getting rejected what is all this but favor is right next to you it's for you to take it hallelujah so you know and and this will add into our lives money it will add businesses it will add the right people and like you know when favor attracts in your life right people because you can be surrounded with many wrong people i have a friend of mine hey, that guy today ah, you need favor to attract right people that guy i'm sure today he has you know five kids Yes, but five, those that we know, you know, those that we know, we see, he is posting. Five, because he's surrounded by all manner of wrong people that are giving him wrong advice. They are giving him bad, bad. We grew up together. We grew up together. He's like six, seven months younger than me. I was born in September, then in the following year in May, our mothers were friends. So it's not about the environment. It's about the people he was attracting around his life. Because we grew up in the same town, went to, you know, the same level of school. But he was just, his own favor was attracting all kinds of demonic people that were calling him to go and drink, you know, calling him to go and sleep with girls. Now, girls he knows. Oh, telling him about a girl. He will tell you everything about a woman. But favor 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 there's no favor upon his life because he is attracting wrong people hallelujah so we need the favor of god to attract right people in our lives you know and you know and you know when the right and the, when the right people favor you you know you are set if today mark zuckerberg or bill gates or jack ma or warren buffett or who's that guy jack bezos decides to favor us they just decide to favor us. There's no, you know, he, he will, they will link us with all those Silicon Valley people. The Mark will link us with Silicon. Uh, Jack Ma will link us with China. Warren Buffett with Wall Street. You know, there's no way you can fail. Even if you want to fail, those people will be saying, no, man. They just invite you to one dinner. You know where they play that... Uh, opera music and they drink wine you too you can just drink your apple juice they say and hey, this is solely uh, solely what do you do no i mean what what what, what? ah give me your business card the next day you get a call all kinds of contracts to supply whatever you are doing because you are favored by the right people mm-hmm. not that you are favored by people you know that will tell you what where to park or which girl to approach, you know, which wine is a good wine, or yeah, you know, which brandy is a good brandy. Be favored by right people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know, you get industry giants added to you. There are many people now, they are doing great things, not because, like I said, not because of anything, but because they are favored. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, and there's no better time, I'm going to repeat it. There is no better time than when you are young. There is no better time than when you are young. There are many things that can lead people to depression. You know, people today are being rejected. You know, on Twitter, people are posting, uh, I got the job. No, after five years of searching, I got the job. 
I was getting rejected. Hey, I've been attending interviews because there's no favor. When you are rejected, you, you know, you will be depressed. You will start asking, what's wrong with me? Hey, what's wrong with me, God? Ah, maybe I must just end it. Maybe I must just kill myself. Hey, why, why does no one like me? But when you are favored, ah, you enjoy God. You don't need to deal with uh, the pain of rejection. And you know, there are people with masters. You know, in Eastern Cape, they were carrying placard. Hi, I graduate. Masters. No. PhD, wearing red gown on the street. Hi, I graduate. Why, why is South Africa not hiring graduates? And there are people who studied N6. N6, I'm telling you, N6. The person who I recruited has a diploma. The person that, she has a diploma. One, the other one has an N6, the other one has a degree. But you know, because favor, you know, favor is favor. Whether you have N6 or you have PhD, favor is the one that works. Whether you went to TUT, I went to TUT. I personally, I went to TUT and then I went to UNISA. I just came to UP because, you know, I just liked UP. But I went to UNISA and I was enjoying great things with my UNISA and my TUT. And there are people who went to you. UCT that do not earn close to the money I earn. So it's not about where you which course, you know. Some did actuary science, but they are doing actuary science at uh, uh, where is this place? Central. They are actuarying their science in Central. And then some got their job at uh, Bidvest. And in their first job, they were staying in Sentin because of favor. Favor, favor, favor. Someone say favor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. My uncle, you know, I love that guy. I, know, I don't love him because, you know, he gives you money. That guy will not give you money. But he dropped out of school. When we were growing up, he used to tell us, Ah, I'm charmed. I'm sure he doesn't even know how to speak English. But in our town, he's one of the richest people. He dropped out of school. He was driving a text. No text, coco, coco, super 16 at that time. He was driving a text, then he bought his own text. Now he owns bulldozers, uh, construction vehicles. He's, he's, you know, he's got properties, he's got so many businesses. Favor. Because there are some people who are also doing what he's doing, but you no know, people just go to him. He has a truck, he was, he was, he likes to brag. Hey, I'm John, the truck is one million, I'm John. You want me to own the truck? Uh, we didn't even go to school. You, you, Mchana, you went to school, but you don't have a truck for one million. I was thinking, Kai, it's true. I studied four years, five years. Now I'm doing six years for honors, and I don't even have a car that costs him. He has a truck, one million rand truck. And he, after that, he bought another one. Now he owns three trucks. I'm sure all of them cost one million, over one million. Two bulldozers. You know, he's carrying water, he's doing bricks, he's building houses all over the place. Favor. Favor. So, I, 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 you know, we like to focus on what do I have, what did I do. And we, 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 we start lying God's favor. And God's favor is, you know, when especially, you know, God blesses what is in your hand. If you have a UP degree, pray with your UP degree and say, Lord, favor me. That one will take you higher than the favor of the person who has metric or N6. You already have natural favor. Now add supernatural favor on it. Amen. Hallelujah. First Kings 18 verse 6. I want us to see that when the Lord's hand is upon you, you know, you outrun. You outrun Ferraris. First Kings chapter 18 verse 47. No, 46, sorry. It says, and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he gathered up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. This one in, in, in New Living Translation, it says, then the Lord gave special strength to Elijah. He tucked his cloak into his belt and ran ahead of Ahab's chariot all the way. He gave special strength. What is special strength? Favor. When you have favor, you overtake. When you have favor, you overtake. It doesn't matter when, you know, when we started at Nissan. Oh, there was that day. You know, my friends, we were still uh, entry level. We were still doing graduate program. And in other departments, people were getting dished with permanent position. Pah, permanent, permanent.
permanent. And I was like, God, these people are going to drink my time. It's, a, it's an abomination. You better do something. These people are getting permanent. They are going to take your car and carry all kinds of girls with your car. You know, in Nissan, when you get permanent, you can get a car. And those guys were carrying all kinds of girls. They were taking jukes, Kashkai, uh, X Trade, and they were carrying. I said, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a lie. It's a lie. Me, I will be carrying church people. I will be giving tithe. You are giving. Ah, I prayed. Jigga, jigga, now I got permanent. And I was carrying church people. You now, when we go to conference, I say, yes, come. When we go to evangelize, you now I carry church people with my car now. I said, ah, and then all those people that got permanent before me, now I am there, they are here, they are looking, ah, because special strength, favor, to, favor, you know, it's like a, when you are playing chess with a queen, you know, chess with a queen, you just go one side to one side, any direction, there's no, you can overtake those pawns, no pawn. it goes one block, and then one block. And then one block. Even the king goes one block. But queen, you know, you are like a queen in the chessboard. You are like queen. When you have supernatural favor of God. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. You mm-hmm. know? And, you know, it, it's one person was on a chariot with six horsepower. One was running with the foot. He, he was not an athlete, he was a prophet. But he outran it. So when God's hand is on you with his favor, don't worry who is where. You know what your friends are now, have now achieved. Hey, my mom bought a car. Hey, someone is staying in Centin and we were in high school together. By the time your own is finished, you will be buying a house in America. Imagine those comedians before Trevor Noah. Now Trevor Noah has a penthouse in Manhattan, my friend. But you as maybe Skumba, you are already on radio before him. But now he's on the daily show. So don't look, just focus on God's favor. By the time it gets hold of you, it will push you. It will push you. But that's why I say, I always tell people that we must develop a hard working mentality. Not because we want God's favor. We must pray, like I said, we must not pray and give and fast because we want God's favor. We do those things because we are favored. Because God will promote you in the workplace. And then by the time you are finished with God, you are disgraced him. And they will be saying, ah, these Christians, these Christians don't work hard. These Christians, by the time when you are in the interview and you tell them you are a Christian, think about that Christian lady who disgraced them. I say, ah, no, we can't hire Christians anymore. I know managers who don't want to hire Christians. Because we don't work hard because we want favor. We work hard because we are favored. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And you know, and when God's favor is on you, honestly, he said, the Bible says he gives grace to the humble. So the only thing that can bring you down is yourself. God elevates. You know, the people, people who say, ah, God dealt with it. He struck him down. God did not deal with you anything, my friend. It's you. It's you. It's you. There are laws. You know, there are laws like the law of gravity. No matter how much you pray, me as a Vuyo here, if I go on top of that student center and I jump, I will die. It's not because, you know, God uh, d- dealt with him. By the time he saw that he had favor, he, and then he jumped. And then, no, it's you. You are the one who brings yourself down. Hallelujah. And I want to, you know, uh, as I was preparing this, I, I wasn't getting, like, my points. And I was like, oh, Lord, give me points. I like points. Know, four points of favor but you know so we, I want us before we close uh, the areas you know that we need God's favor yeah four areas in which we need God's favor four areas in which we need God's favor number one number one in the marketplace we need God's favor in the marketplace. So whether you are doing a business or you have a job, for you to succeed, you need to have God's favor. You need people to like what you are selling. You need people to like what you, you know, the product or service that you have. 
in your job you need your boss to like you so that he can give you promotions he can give you increase you know the the world works because people like you sometimes yes there are those people that you know they are like because they are brilliant but most of the time most of the people that we see get promoted it's because people like them I me mean, i won't say uh, i don't like to deceive people and say ah it's because they are hard working there are many people in my company that i feel like if i can just knock your head if if i had the bravery i would just pray you out i just pray god bless them with another job that will take them away from this place because of favor they were elevated so in the marketplace you need favor you know people in the marketplace they are jumping fires they are going to buy anointing wine in Victoria West you know anointing of promotion they are paying delegate services of 70000 rand to get promoted and you you are a christian without favor you will stay there you will be whole jesus in you you will just be kept with jesus burning on the inside of you holy spirit tongues that you know when you are prof- when you are speaking in tongues the men of god says hey, that lady is in on fire that's the holy spirit you will stay there without the favor of god hallelujah in relationships we need favor in our relationships there you know we're not in relationship of a boyfriend and girlfriend eh? friendships with the mentors with your with your teachers with your boss with your employees you need favor in your relationships you know people who are willing to bleed for you people who are willing and say you know like david like uh, like jacob wrestling with the angels i said i will not let you go unless you bless me we need favor with people who say unless you get blessed i will not leave your side unless you succeed in what you are doing i will not not the ones that today they like you because you know you are doing whatever they say the way they are saying they say eh no if you do it like this and you do it and then they like you tomorrow by the time you say ah but i don't think it's a good idea yeah wa pa pa get wa pa wa pa and then they leave you so we need people who will be with us through thick and thin whether you are doing the right thing or you are doing wrong you know like me i i don't want to lie like me i i was even telling my my sister was saying ah when your pastor likes you yes i'm like i don't know man i don't know that man just likes me it doesn't matter i come to pray i don't come to pray for you for you come 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 and then yes sir. ah how are you I say ah, i'm fine oh okay he just wants to see me it's favor it's not because you know yes it was because i pray but when even when i'm not praying the way i used to he still likes me it's favor and he wants destiny to be fulfilled no matter what he i'm sure he's made up in his heart that whether i like it or not i will succeed in whatever i do it's favor it's favor and we need people that will favor us like that number 3 in our academic lives so in school we need favor you know at school you need favor you need you know people to connect with you you know there's a there's the reason you know god revealed to me our life ah lord in school what will you do in school will the lecturer give you a question paper I said no 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 and he reminded me you know there was a time when we were doing assignments when we were doing uh, no we didn't. yeah we were doing an assignment i thought i was killing it ah i thought i was killing it i was submitting two days you know two weeks before i was already done and this girl just said you know there's a the assignment group that we are doing come and join us on saturday i said no i said no come that girl just liked me even in the class she, she just liked me not because she had a crush she just liked me and she forced me to come by the time i got there i realized that i was going to get zero by the time i redid my assignment i got 86% and an assignment that weighs 40% of the year mark favor in our academic lives this other time we were writing a uh, exam you know open book exam 900 page textbook you know you can't open book you can't turn because it's only 2 hours you can this guy just came to me and said did you study this part did you study this part and i was like which part are you talking about he said on page uh, 340 something i turned to pin and i marked it god just said mark it i marked it i marked when i got to the exam 40% was that thing that I told you before we entered not to 
while we are standing to enter IT building uh, downstairs, we were standing. He said, did you study this part? Did you study this part? When you got there, 20, and you need to type those things. It was a long question that you need to type all those 20 points. Imagine if I was still looking, I was gonna fail. I paid and I paid and I can't see what they are asking. And this guy just told me, but no, this part and this part, they will definitely ask it. So in our academic lives, we need favor. We need to hook up with the right people. You know, more especially when you hook up with repeaters. Ah, I like to hook up with repeaters. They already know the tricks. That this man will ask like this, this one will do like this. So we need favor. We need the favor of God, you know. So that even in the, in, you know, when you are doing research, you've got people that are good in research that will help you. And then number four, which is the last one, in the journey towards your purpose. In the journey towards your purpose, this one, this one I, th- I think it's uh, more important even the, the three on top. In the journey toward your purpose. You know, we need favor with people who will lead and guide us. We need favor with people who will lead and guide us and will not get tired of you. You know, in life you make mistakes. You try this, you make a mistake. You did that, it was wrong. You know, and sometimes the mistake is deliberate. You just say, ah, I don't care, I will do it. They say, don't do it, don't do it. I say, listen, I will do it. And then that person, because they favor you, they wait for you. When your fingers get bent, they come, say, come, come, come. They pour ointment, you know, burn ointment. They bandage you and say, let's go. So you need favor for people, you know, people who will not give up on you. There's no, there's nothing sweeter than, you know, having people who will never give up on you. No matter what, no matter, even if they say you impregnated the girl, they say, okay, come, come. Why did you do that? You know, they knock you once or twice. Let your head be correct, but come. You know, now is the right, this is the right part. Let's go again. No matter what you do, you need people who will favor you. Not because of what you have done for them, but because favor, God's favor is upon you. So you are not doing anything for them, but these people just favor you. In the journey, you know, life has a lot of uh, bumps. Life has a lot of... So you need people who will guide you. Don't do that. You know, this one will destroy you. And you don't. Yes, you will make mistakes, but there are some mistakes that can destroy you. There are some mistakes that can just utter and you can't recover. Not because God is wicked, but you know, the kind of, some kinds of mistakes you can't recover from. And you know, when you have people that you know, like for me now, if I don't have people that are guiding me in this pastor thing, one day I will go to Ghana, you know, and the growing crowd, the way they are growing crowd, say, ah, the church is not growing. They say, come, my brother, you know, there's a place in Limbobo. And then you can't recover from that. How do you recover from going to Ghana? When you, when you say you, you repent, those demons will ask for their things. Those demons will ask for their things if you repent. And because you already like the fame and the money and the cars, ah, you just continue until you die. And then you end up in hell. So you need people who will guide you so that you don't end up doing uh, wrong things. Some people will even advise you, ah, you want the job. Just pay them. If, if, if they want to be paid, just pay them. But there are some people who say, don't pay, no matter what. You know, be guided. So that's favor. So you need favor in the marketplace. You need favor in your relationships, in, uh, in our academics, and in the journey of life. We need, pe- we need God's favor to work for us. Hallelujah. Because those are, according to me, the four main points that, you know, uh, that will, especially in relationships, God can show you who to marry and the person says you're not my type, what can you do? There you need favor because you can't change her type. Say, ah, me, I like, uh, you know, light skin guys, you view you are dark. Me, I like light skin guys, who you know, who are tall and big. There you just need favor. You can't do anything else because you can't say, Lord, make me her type. No, you just need the, the, to change her mind and say, ah, if God said, then God said, hallelujah. Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is a uh,